Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, just like it says upon the hat. And welcome to my radio shack in the back room. This time we're going to have a ham shack chat about the FT8 mode and do's and don'ts that will increase your enjoyment and success with this mode. It will also help you deal with crowded bands and those with less than optimum etiquette in FT8. Down in the video description, I've included links to several of my how-to videos for FT8, along with links to download the software that I'll be showing you. As always, if you have any concerns, corrections, or general notes and remarks, please leave a comment. And now here, I'll make a few general remarks. And now, let's get on with the rest of the video. On the left side of my screen, I've got a program called Grid Tracker. Grid Tracker is all about situational awareness, and that's our first do. Always be aware, and yes, use additional programs such as Grid Tracker to help you become more aware. To give you a quick tour, up here on the map, and the map is adjustable in and out, you can go out and do the whole world if you want, these blue lines access PSK Reporter and look for my call sign. So I'm right here, and if you come out, you can see up here in Alberta, I'm being received by this station at a minus 12 dB signal to noise. There are other features to this map. For example, when I actually make a contact, you'll see a red line pop up. All of these colors can be set to your own choices. Also, you can see these black lines. Those are existing conversations. All of this information is being fed to Grid Tracker from WSJTX. Moving down, this section is called the call roster. Now, I've got it filtered to show only CQ messages, and you can also select RR73 to toggle. So when somebody's sending an RR73, which is the last thing you'll send, or a CQ, then it'll pop up here. You've got more controls. So you can see here, I've got my min DB set to minus 12. Here, I've selected CQ only, and this is where I selected RR73. Other things that Grid Tracker can do for you, you can set up verbal alerts. For instance, if I want to know if a new DXCC station has popped up, it will announce new DXCC on the band. So that's one useful thing. You can also put in a full call sign. There are some other options. For more information on Grid Tracker, I've put not only the download site where you can download it and install it, I've also put a couple of my previous videos up where I discuss Grid Tracker in more detail. I talk about how to set it up, how to use a few of the features, and give you a couple examples of QSOs. Continuing on with our situational awareness, and this is definitely a do, up here under WSJTX, I'm going to go to my settings and I'm gonna come here to frequencies. Occasionally, you'll be working an FT8 or other digital contest, and you're going to want to have additional frequencies in here. The contest organizers will make recommendations, and you can come in here, and I'm just going to right-click this and go Insert. Uh, what you want to do is you'll pick FT8. You're going to enter the frequency, and at this point, the rest of the stuff you can fill out if you want. Uh, you can just click OK. I'm just going to cancel out of that. Next colors is, are up in here. This red is if my call is in the message, i.e. someone's calling me. You also have new continents, new CQ zones, new ITU zones, new DXCC and new DXCC on band. The difference between being a hot pink and a faded pink. A new call. The blues I have up here, you'll see that those are new calls. This is the station I just worked, AA4CB, so he is showing up as a worked call. When I make a transmitted message, it shows up right here in yellow. There are other options, and I'll leave that to you. Finally, under the Advanced tab, you do have your special operating conditions, 
Uh, you've got a number of predefined contests here. For example, if you want to do FT8 during field day, you would put your field day exchange here, and I was 2F Ohio, and the contest name is field day. So when I'm calling CQ, it would come out CQ field day. And we're just going to undo that and cancel out of that. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. Like me. Occasionally, I will call CQDX. The way you do that, you just come right here down to your CQ message and you edit it. So I would just enter DX right there, edit that message so that when I call CQ, I'm actually calling CQDX and that's what's going out. Please don't answer a CQDX if you are not a DX station. That happens all the time and it's very frustrating to me. And I imagine it's also frustrating to the other folks out there. So you're looking for a DX station. Someone who's not a DX calls you. What do you do? Do you ignore them? I don't. I go ahead and work them and go ahead and log them and go right back to calling CQDX. Do make sure that you check your auto sequence. Usually CQ first is the selection. And this is from when you're calling CQ and you have multiple stations reply to you. This will cause the first decoded station to be displayed. We have another option, it's max distance. Certain contests, for example, the Worldwide Digi Contest, not only gives you a point for every contact you make, but will also give you additional bonus points for distance. You do want to have your max distance checked under those circumstances. You can also leave it just for regular operating if you'd prefer to work longer distance. Days. On your waterfall, be careful not to get too close to your neighbor and definitely don't overlap. Pardon! Can you give me some space? Now the best way to do this, I've found, is you've got these four sliders down here. Take the upper left one, move it to the right you'll see that everything becomes really bright. So all these weak stations that might not have shown up before are now going to be identifiable. You can pick a clean frequency, and I'm looking, it looks like right here is a clean frequency. And you can see I'm right next to them, but I'm not overlapping. Now, once you find a open frequency, you wanna come up here, click on the tune button and you can see that I am sending out a single tone at 897 hertz. At this point, you can adjust your ALC. You could do it here. You see it's going down. And you should keep it somewhere between a third and a half. You can also adjust it using your DT gain if your rig has such a thing. So you see I can turn it down and turn it back up. Once you're locked in there, for appearances sake and to keep your eyes from burning, you can turn your slider back down. And I like to adjust mine to where the hottest signals are just showing a flicker of red, like right there. Keep in mind the waterfall is for your information only. It does not affect your transmit or receive. On your rig, don't overpower your output. Remember that the WS in WSJT stands for weak signal, and it's designed for weak signal work. I will, as a default, use 40 watts. However, many times I'll cut that back to 25 watts or even down to QRP levels at five watts. Legally, you can use full legal power. Don't be that guy. Just be a good neighbor. Help me get the word out about this and other videos of mine that you have found useful and or entertaining. Please share extra, extra with your friends in the ham radio community and especially on social media. A couple general notes. Don't get upset if someone transmits on top of you. When that happens to me, I will generally try to continue calling CQ a few times and then just go find a new frequency to work there's a good chance that they just can't hear you. It's not worth pulling your hair out. Do be the better operator, meaning 
Don't give people a reason to be pissed at you. Be the optimal operator and don't be a lid. Do know your alternate options. So there are a couple things you can do. You can change over up here into mode to FT4. And you can see FT4 is not used as much. Another thing you can do is change your bands. If things are just too crazy on the band you're on, go ahead and change it to another band. You can change your TX even, the toggle at on or off, and that'll put you, you know, switch your transmit and receive times. If you're someone like me who likes to just sit and call CQ and let people come to you, that's fine. But you can also be more active. First off, turn off your hold frequency. So now, so there are a number of stations and you can just go ahead and select them through here and work them as you will. Remember that my call roster, I've got sorted by decibel level. So there we go. So I could pick the best signal on there and work him first. But that's the time. That's something for another time. A justifiable criticism on FT8 is that some folks will say they don't like it because you're not making a QSO. However, there's a way the around JSA that. JSA call program uses the FT8 waveform to allow extended QSOs. Now those QSOs are going to list in 15 second increments, but instead of going transmit, receive, transmit, receive, it's just going to stay on transmit the whole time. Now, it does have a really neat feature called heartbeat. So I'm going to click on heartbeat and you'll see it's put me down here in this orange range and that is where it's going to send heartbeat. So I am currently sending ND3N at heartbeat, heartbeat EM89. And you'll see other stations who are on the band, they're starting to populate up in here. And all of these red stations are stations that are responding to my heartbeat. At this point, I can pick one of them and call them and initiate a QSO. I've got the download page for JS8 call down in the video description along with several of my videos that I have shown you how to set it up and make an initial contact and give a demo of that. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to watch this video. And if I have to leave you with one thing, it would be not to get too upset when the bands and the other operators don't go your way. Although FT8 may seem like a sprint, to be successful with it, you need to have the mindset of a marathon runner. Patience is a virtue for a reason. 73 until the next, hey y'all. This has been a ham shack chat about do's and don'ts with the FT8 mode. As always, I am at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. It's like pulling teeth to get anybody to actually care.